Well, you can turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. I want to look at this passage of Scripture. If you have your Bibles with you, and I did put these verses on the notes. Matthew chapter 7. The Bible says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man. I think I have a typo there, don't I? Does it say a wide man? That's supposed to be a wise man. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I must have just eaten when I typed that and <laughs> thought, well, yeah, I'm wide. <clears throat> a wide man, a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain fell and the flood came. And the winds blew and slammed against the house. And yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. That's you guys. That's you guys. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act upon them will be like a fool. There might be somebody here that this describes. Will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and slammed against the house. And it fell, and great was its fall. You know, I just, um, church is about salvation, right? Winning people to the Lord, making sure that they're saved, making sure they're going to heaven, right? So I wanted to preach a message that focused on that. So today I want to talk to you about being ready for the big storm, which I think most of you in here are but maybe we know somebody that's not. So I want to talk about being ready for the big storm. Now we, as a community, we have just gone through what Governor DeSantis said would one day be called the big one. And Hurricane Ian was a big weather event that caused the loss of life, destruction and hurt. I mean, you really don't even want to talk about all the material destruction because material destruction because people died. They died. People died from this. The storm, and you know, many of us suffered somewhat financially and materially. But I think, I think we're going to come through this with the Lord's help. It might take a little time. I'm, you know work, but I believe we're all going to come through this. Um, we're here, and we're here today, and I think we're thankful, aren't we? We have thankful hearts toward God. We're, we're, we appreciate the grace that he showed us, and we're going to get through this, and we made it through it. I just want to say, based on this passage that I just read, storms are really nothing new. Uh, to be surprised about a big storm coming to southwest Florida, you have to be sort of naive or just a little kid. You know, you haven't experienced them yet. But to be surprised about that, you're, you're just not paying attention at all what's going on around you over the last few years. And storms are nothing new, and storms actually are frequently mentioned in the Bible. We know about God when he judged the earth. It was a big rain event. That was a storm. It was a flood. Uh, killed every single person on earth except eight people. So storms are nothing new. Floods are nothing new. Rain events are nothing new. And people dying from them is nothing new. I mean, everybody was wiped out at the flood except eight people. The Bible says in Genesis 6, 8, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Guys, if you got through this storm and you're doing pretty good, it's only because of the favor of God on your life. It's gracious work of God. Um, God saved Noah and his family through this storm by grace. 
And storms are also mentioned in Jesus' day, this passage that we are looking at mentions it, but there's another one in Mark chapter 4, and I want to read this real quick in Mark chapter 4. This is not on the note, so you might have to turn in your Bible. Mark chapter 4, verse 35, Jesus had been preaching and uh, healing people all day long, probably several days in a row, and he's real tired. So the Bible says, on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. So he's trying to get away from that crowd of people, so he's getting in a boat. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. So there's a convoy of, bo convoy of boats going across. And look what happened. In a great wind storm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already feeling. So th this is basically a little hurricane happening here. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow, and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care even that we perish? So here you have Jesus sleeping. And by the way, guys, when, you, when you're tired enough, you can sleep through anything. Hannah was sleeping during the hurricane. We're all hiding in the closet. She's laying in the bed with the windows open sleeping. It was, it was great. Yeah, she always has said rain is great sleeping. But she's in there sleeping. Uh, but Jesus, Jesus is, he's sleeping and the guys are saying, his, his disciples are saying, don't you even care that we're perishing? So that gives us an idea of exactly how bad the storm was because these people are experienced fishermen. They understand storms. They've been in difficult and dangerous situations and they're thinking, man, we're going to die. This is a bad one. This is a big storm. Uh, verse 39, so then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. It's amazing how Jesus can be in his hu humanness, his humanity, and he's sleeping because he's tired, and then the very next moment he's, he's acting like the divine supernatural God that he is, and he just says, hey, stop raining, stop wind blowing, and controls everything. And that's the way Jesus, it, guys, when Jesus is in your vessel, you have nothing to fear. When he is in your vessel, you just got to make sure he's in it, that he's with you, that you have trusted him. When he's in your vessel, there's nothing to fear because he's God and there's no problem that you or I will ever have in our life that he can't calm down if you trust him. Now, if you don't trust him, hey, you're in for it. You're in for fear. You're in for difficulty. You're in for anxiousness and worry and discouragement and depression. You're in for all that stuff if you don't trust him. But if you trust him, he can, he can calm down any problem that you're in the midst of. And then he rebukes, so he rebukes the wind. Verse 40, he rebukes them. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now, I think in Matthew he says, have so little faith. But here he says that you don't have any, you have no faith. Now, this is a big problem with uh, believers, our lack of faith. Jesus is always having to encourage us and, and prove himself to us and do things for us. It seems like a group here in this church and some of us as old as we are, no offense to you guys, we should never worry. Why? Because God, Jesus has proved himself over and over and over and over and over to us that, hey, I'm with you. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. Oh, you've been through that valley? Guess what? You're going to be on a hill pretty soon. Hasn't he done that? Why should we ever worry? Why should we ever not trust that Jesus is going to get us through this unscathed, really? 
I mean, sure, I, I lost a few things, but you know what? Who cares? Who cares? Jesus can calm down any problem in your life when you trust him. And lack of faith is a constant problem of God's people. Jesus rebukes them. And he rebuked them because of this. Why did he rebuke them? This is on your notes. Because the storm, that storm and the af aftermath of, of these kind of storms cannot even compare to the biggest storm anyone will ever face. And that is what he's talking about in Matthew 7, the passage that I read. It's the biggest storm that any person will ever face. And by the way, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you've already taken care of that storm. It's done. You've already taken care of it. That storm can't hurt you. So Jesus is saying, he's rebuking them, you have little faith. I mean, you're worried about this little storm and this little aftermath. I've already taken care of the big storm for you. This is the one he's talking about in Matthew chapter 7. And there might be somebody here today that maybe you've never had that big storm taken care of for yourself. In Matthew chapter 7, the storm is picturing the judgment of God on the life that you've built. That's what this passage is talking about. It is the judgment of God on the life that you have built. Guys, every person that does not have the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior is going to face a big storm and a big judgment. And it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be the biggest storm they've ever been through. Ian was nothing compared to standing before a holy God and giving an account of your sin to him. Revelations chapter 20 says this, and this is at the end of time. He said, and I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were open. So there's books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. That's a separate book. Well, what was in all the other books? And the dead were judged from these things which were written in the books. So God is keeping a record of every single thing you do. Everything. And they're in the books. According to their deeds. And then Revelation 20 verse 15 says... And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, that's the other book, he was thrown into the lake of fire. That's into hell. So there's going to be a judgment. And Jesus pictures this judgment in this passage in Matthew chapter 7 that talks about a storm, which pictures the judgment of God. And it's really a warning from Jesus to those two builders that are mentioned who represent two kinds of people. One of them was, their name was written in the book of life. The other person was not written in the book of life. So there's two builders. One is a wise person who builds their life on the strong and permanent rock of Jesus Christ. He's a wise builder. And that house that he's building represents his life. That's what it represents. He's building, he's building, he's building a house. It represents what he, how he has built his life. And he built his house on the words of Jesus. The wise builder did. On the words of Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew 7.24... Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them. So he hears Jesus' words. What does he hear? He hears how to be saved. That's the first thing he hears. Guys, there's a lot of people that think they're saved and they're not. Because they're not doing it the way Jesus says it is to be done. But this wise guy, he hears his words. He hears 
how to be saved. He hears how to behave. He hears the way that he is supposed to think. You know, guys, we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. Right? Jesus tells us how to believe, what to believe. He tells us how to behave. He tells us how to think. You're not allowed to just think any way you want to think if you're a child of God. You have to conform your mind to the thoughts of Jesus Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, is what the Bible says. And then he goes on and says, don't think about your own interests, but think about the interest of others. One of the big things that ought to be going on in every Christian's life during this hurricane is helping other people. You better check yourself if all you've been doing is taking care of yourself. You should be taking care of other people. Also, sure, take care of your stuff, but take care of other people as well. But this guy, this wise man, is that Officer Howard? Thank you for being here. I'm in the middle of something, but I'll talk to you in a few minutes, okay? Thank you. Yeah, he's not here to arrest anybody. <laughs> he's, he's from the Pinellas Park Police Department. I think Tom Richards connected us to him somehow through Wendy, and they're bringing a truckload of donations, and we're going to try to distribute them to people that we know who have needs. So thank you for being here. Yeah. I'll be done in about an hour with this sermon. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> um, but this, this wise man, this wise builder, he listened to the words of Jesus Christ. He believed them. He acted upon them, and he trusted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And he wasn't going to try to earn his way to heaven because Jesus had been talking all through the Sermon on the Mount about the kind of life that is the righteous life, the way to go to heaven. And this guy is not going to try to earn his way to heaven. He is doing it through Jesus Christ. Jesus never taught that we could earn our way to heaven. And there are many people out there that still think that they can merit the afterlife, that they can do things in this life to earn their way to the next life, and you can't. You are saved by grace through faith, not of works, and no one can boast. Nobody's going to be able to stand in front of God one day and say, I deserve to go to heaven. I did 51% good stuff and 49% bad stuff, so you've got to let me in, God. You're not going to be able to do that. Now, Jesus did teach that people who genuinely believe his words will do his words. Did you know that? Jesus taught that. It's all through the Bible, all through the Old Testament, all through the New Testament, that a, Jesus taught that people who genuinely, truly believed in him for salvation, without exception, they would do his word. They would follow his word. Now, that doesn't mean they were, they, it's not perfection, it's direction. They weren't perfect at following his word. Nobody can do that. But their life was always pointing toward God and wanting to serve God and repenting of their sin when they sinned against God. They had a direction always toward God. And Jesus had just even said something like this and in Matthew chapter 7, right before the passage of the storm, he said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter to, in the kingdom of heaven. Just because you go around talking about Jesus and, and the Lord and God does not mean you're going to go to heaven. Anybody can say things. But he who does the will of my Father. Do you see that? You have to do the will of God. You find out what the will of God is. You hear what he says. You believe what he says. And then you do what he says. That's what he's saying here. Anyone who does the will of my Father. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And I will declare to them, 
I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, guys, there's many people who profess to know the Lord Jesus Christ, and they do good works. But they do it for recognition, and they do it so they can pridefully claim that they are good. That's why they do it. And Jesus says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I don't even know who you are. Now guys, storms have a way of showing people who they really are. Uh, someone told me right before the storm, I think it was probably Tuesday, uh, that a guy went into Publix, came out. What do you think his basket was absolutely full of? I mean, this guy didn't even have potato chips. It no, it was beer. It was beer. Who said beer? Yeah. It wasn't you, was it? I, I heard a story. <laughs> it wasn't, okay. But this came out with a full basket of beer. And, you know, that's what was important to this person when the storm's coming. Because he knew, he knew that Publix would be closed for a few days after the hurricane. He had to have his beer. He also had to have his beer during the hurricane. Because some people can't cope with problems without being out of their mind. So they have to have help. And storms have a way of showing people who they really are. And this wise man believed in Jesus and he respected Jesus' words and he obeyed Jesus' words and he was safe from the storm. Because when you build your life on the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, the judgment of God is not going to hit you. You're safe from it. Why? Jesus already took it for you. But then there's this other guy, this other builder. He's building his life, but he's a fool, the Bible says. See, he heard the truth just like the wise man did. Do you remember that? He heard the truth. He heard it. That's what Jesus said. And then he built a house. And you know, one commentator said that if you look at both those guys' house, they look pretty much the same from the outside. They, they both look pretty good. And so both of these men had similar, they heard the word of God, they had similar houses. Uh, this guy probably even felt like he was secure in his house. Just like the wise man did. This fool probably went around and said, hey, I'm okay with God. Me and God are okay. This man represents all the people in the world that have not genuinely bowed their knee down to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who he represents. And they think they're okay. Uh, they even have religious beliefs. They're religious. You know, most of the world is religious. Most of the world believe in some God, a God. Um, most of the world think that they're going to have some kind of afterlife, a pleasant one. Did you know that, that they think that? But the vast majority of the people on the planet at any given time are not going to go to heaven. But they think they are. They think, why? Because they built their house. And, and these people, they have religions. And they pray. And they have their philosophies of life. You know, they'll, they, they'll tell you what it is, you know. You know, who, he who dies with the biggest toys wins. Have you heard that philosophy of life? This is the kind of things that people talk about. They believe these things. Uh, I don't get revenge. What do they say? No, I don't get mad, I get even or something like that. That's a philosophy. 
And they have their worldviews, how they, they filter everything through their worldviews. But all, it's all wrong. It's all wrong. See, they're not okay, but they think they are okay. And there's going to be this big storm that comes to them one day that's going to show them how foolish they've been. Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act upon them. So this guy heard the truth. Just like the wise man did. This foolish man heard the truth. Heard the word of God. Heard the true gospel. That Jesus is the only way to go to heaven. He heard it. But he didn't act upon it. Does not act upon it will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. The sand pictures an unstable life that will not last. That's what it pictures. An unstable life. That when the storm comes, it's going to destroy it. Because it's on sand. The mark of a genuine believer is not simply hearing and believing. This is an important statement. The mark of a genuine believer is not simply hearing the word of God and believing the word of God. Now that's a shocker because a lot of people, a lot of Preachers, a lot of teachers are telling you that if you hear God's word and you believe God's word, whatever part it is you're hearing, you're okay. And that's not biblical. The only person who is going to be safe from the judgment of God are those people who hear God's word, believe God's word, and do God's word. Those are the only people that are safe from the judgment of God. Verse 27 said it fell. His foolish house was built on sand. It fell and great was the fall. And that pictures what happens to a person when they're standing in front of God without genuine salvation. Great will be your fall. And there's a, there's a fall because why? Because in your mind you think you're high up. That's why he says there's a fall. You, you think you're okay. You think you're secure. You think you've built your house and you're, you're, you're on top. But you're not. And that's why you fall. And it's going to be a great fall because it's going to be the last time you ever fall into the lake of fire, into hell. Now, guys, Ian was a horrible storm. We all agree with that. But there's one worse coming for those who have not given their life over to the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now, how do you do that? How do you give your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ? Holy, fully, totally over to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's two things that you can do. One is repentance. Repentance. You turn from your sin and your love of the world and you do the word of God. So you turn from sin and your love of the world, love of yourself, and you turn, and I'm not picking on this side over here, you turn from your sin <laughs> and your love of the world and, and you turn to doing the word of God. You, you, you repent of your sin. So there's a change of mind. You change your mind to how you think about God, how you think about yourself, and how you think about sin. There's a change. That's repentance. Now someone says, some people say, and I think Brother Bill went to a church one time that said this, and they left as, you know, you don't have to repent. And that thinking there is, the idea is, is that some people think that repentance is a work, a good work that you do before salvation. It's not. Nobody genuinely ever really repents until God is working in your heart anyway. Nobody ever genuinely repents. That's why so many people are say they're saved, but they live ungodly lives because they've never really genuinely repented. And God is has not worked in their heart in that, in that way. 
when you when God is working in your heart, you repent. You turn from your sin. And this is what all believers do. All genuine believers repent. And this idea that some people say, wait, I thought you could come to Jesus just as you are. Just as you are, just come to Jesus. Guess what? That's true. You can. You can come to Jesus just as you are. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past, what, you're, what you've done today, no matter what kind of sin you've committed. You can come to Jesus just as you are today. But listen, you cannot come away from conversion the same way you were. There has to be a change or conversion never took. Do you understand that? In other words, you're not saved. And that's why Jesus says that you have to do my words. Over and over through the scripture, he talks about genuine repentance leads to obeying God, doing his word. True repentance can be observed by other people. They can look at your life and say, that person really repented. And then you have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Obviously, you have to have faith in Christ. And you believe and you rely on his death that he died on the cross for your sins and he paid for your sins on the cross. And you rely on his resurrection as securing your eternal life. You have total faith in him. Romans 10, 13 says, whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that calling, when you call on the name of the Lord, you are repenting of your sin and you are believing in Jesus Christ. And if you do that, you're prepared for the big storm. You're safe from it. But if you don't do that, if you don't genuinely repent, that, that has a change in your life, you don't genuinely believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and not rely on you, don't rely on your own good works, your own good deeds, you rely totally on Jesus. If you don't do that, the judgment of God is going to come on your life. And this storm here that we just went through is nothing compared to that. You know, we're a church here, so we care about people's souls, right? That's what I care about. If any of you would have passed away during the storm, I would have been sad about it. But you know what? If you trusted Jesus, I would have had that. I wouldn't have sorrowed like somebody with no hope. I would have known you were okay. That's what I want to make sure, that all of us are okay eternally and ready for that big storm now today i'm going to i'm going to invite you to trust jesus christ if there's somebody here today and you've never trusted jesus christ as your lord and savior i want to invite you to do that let's pray let's pray father we just want to thank you so much for your word i've always just been so reliant on what you say because i really don't have anything to say your word is clear. It's very clear. That a person who has genuinely built their life on you and on the rock that can withstand any storm is the same person that does your word. They don't ignore it. They don't play around with it. They don't act like it's not important but their whole life centers around what you say. And I pray, Father, that if somebody here today that you've touched their heart and now they realize they really haven't been doing that, I pray, God, today that they'd make that right and turn to you in repentance and faith. Lord, I just want to thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed not just upon our church, but upon this area and the kindness that 
has been shown. Lord, it could have been worse. Could have been worse. So we thank you for your grace. We ask you, Lord, for the help to uh, pick up the pieces and go on. We don't claim to be strong. I know everybody uses that term, strong Cape Coral. We don't claim to be strong. We claim to trust you and rely on you and ask you for help and ask you for strength. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.